I uh, ask everybody to not think in two to three year time frames, but to think in five to seven year time frames. To not think about when somebody says to me, "Congratulates Amazon on a good quarter," um, which is a very common thing to say. You meet somebody, they're being nice. They looked at your financial results for the quarter. They're like, "Good quarter." I say, "Thank you." But what I'm thinking to myself is, that quarter, all that those quarterly results were actually pretty much fully baked about three years ago, and so like today. I'm working on you know uh, a quarter that is going to happen in 2020, not next quarter. Next quarter, uh, for all practical purposes, is done already, and it's probably been done for a couple of years. Um, and so, if you start to think that way, um, it changes how you spend your time, how you plan, um, where you put your energy. Um, and, and your ability to look around corners gets better. So many things improve if you can take a long term. By the way, it's not natural for humans. So it's a, it's a discipline that you have to build. The, um, the kind of, you know, uh, get rich slowly schemes are not big sellers on uh, infomercials. You know, it's, uh, and so that's something that you have to sort of steal yourself for and discipline and teach um, uh, over time. There's a lot of things I want to do. I always wanted to be a director. I think, as well, I have so many girls come up to me and tell me that they want to be models, which is fine. It's not a bad thing. I just think there's so much to do. I just went to a wonderful talk about um, genetic engineering and neuroscience, and this man who was giving the talk explained that these like 10,000 kids is from the age of seven to 13 who are doing neuroscience, they do these competitions and wonderful things, and they're doing things in neuroscience which haven't been, which weren't done by him until he was like 30. Like how quickly things like that are changing. And, but they're not, there is an awareness brought to this cool stuff like that. Like that sounds way cooler to me than being a model. But like no one really knows about it. And I just think there are just so many things. I always say to girls, just dream, just dream bigger. Go for president, just keep going up. Astronauts, I don't know. You know, for me, character is not a very complex thing. For me, character is you do what's right. <laughs> you do what's right. You do the right thing. That's what you do. And if you do the right thing, regardless of what the consequences are, that, that represents character. And so then how do you build character? It's a beautiful thing because it's the same thing. If you want to build character, you do the right thing. You do the right thing for yourself. You do the right thing for your family. You do the right thing for your, the people that you know. You do the right thing for your community. You do the right thing for your country. That's what you do. And now, on an individual level, those things are hard things often, right? If those are hard things. You have to make the right decisions. You have to be, live a disciplined life. Those build character, those little things that you do on a daily basis to make yourself better, to improve your health, to improve your, your situation in life. You're doing those things, they're hard to do. And when you do those things, they build your character. And ultimately they lead to your, your, your character being a good character as opposed to a bad one. The world like lacks optimism. I think, you know, everyone's like, your energy, your energy. I've come to realize it's just optimism. I'm just happy, just positive. That's what it is. Just like whatever chemicals are in my body, they just allow me to see the bright side. Like, and I just don't think I've realized how few people have that. Like, no, very few people have it as black and white, 100 zero. Like, I just think everything's good. Do you want to put yourself in motion and start creating instead of drowning in despair, fear, self-pity, doubt, and depression? Have you not had enough of not getting anything done? Then stop fussing about how tired you are all the time. People don't care. They also don't care if you're feeling depressed or down. It doesn't matter. So get over that self-pity because it makes no sense. Each and every single one of us goes through bad times at some point. The way you choose to handle those low times is what creates you and defines you. It's what determines how successful your life will be. While some of us get scared when times are rough and give up, others fuel themselves with the hardship of life. 
and they find a way out. No matter how tired they are, no matter how motivated or unmotivated they are, they find a way to make things happen. They take the opportunity of the failure and make it a valuable lesson for the future. But those that chicken out when life pushes them a little are the crybabies that choose to sit in the narrow comfort of their bubble instead of getting out and expanding their horizons. So what type are you? Do you throw in the towel when things start to go downward? Or do you go through the torment and make it work for you? I need you to turn off any social procrastination network that you're part of. Stop letting the beans and deans of notifications drain your energy and focus on doing the work. Build up surroundings where everything supports your concentration and doesn't give you an opportunity to get a taste of laziness. When you know that you have to do the work, but you choose not to do it, you're literally making a fool of yourself. You're making a mockery of every bit of potential that you have within. You're cheating yourself with the mediocre promise that I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. You're fooling your present, which is the best moment to get things done. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, but now. You keep believing all the lies that your fear and doubt are telling you. You listen to their stories as you fall asleep on your goals, dreams, and tasks. You give these stories so much of your attention that they create a circus in your head. And the main clown is you. Don't go down that road. It's pathetic. Forbid any outer noise to mess up your inner world. People will talk and talk and talk, but you don't have to listen. You are not a recording device that has to memorize everything it hears. You are alive and free to choose whatever you want to listen to, and that should be your own voice. You're not an object that decorates your couch or your bed. You have two feet that can help you walk into the shower, and you have two hands that can help you wash away the night and start this new day. Why would you ever choose to become a whiner that complains about a life that he himself built? Why would you ever choose to postpone doing the work ridiculously hoping that the next time you'll feel motivated enough to actually take action. Determination to get things done doesn't come to you. You move towards it. You ask it in by doing one small thing at a time. When all these little steps sum up, they create the sure path towards success. And stop pushing yourself so hard. You're not a machine. You're a human being that needs to restore energy so that it can move forward with consistent and significant work. Nobody will applaud you if you keep on working until you fall to the ground. What they will do is they'll pity you and the last thing you need is mercy. Be smart about what you do and use your system wisely so that you can rely on it to deliver the best results for your life. Fifty-one percent. All I'm asking for is fifty-one percent optimism. That way, at least I know your mindset is more focused on the positive than the negative. Today is the day that you stop being a worry wart. The definition of worry is to give way to anxiety and unease, to allow one's mind to dwell on difficulties and troubles. And right now, in these troubled times. You're spending way too much of your mental energy on everything that's going wrong. So I need you to come out of the darkness of worry and enter the illumination of mental sunshine. Besides, most of the stuff that you worry about never happens anyway. So this is the moment for you to choose. This is the moment for you to decide to let worry lie dormant and activate optimism and allow it to become performant.